What's going on guys? Welcome to the Hustle or Stay Basic channel, the Invest or Stay Basic segment. I'm your host KG and as always in this segment we're going to take a look at a company, learn a little bit about it and see if it's undervalued today. Uh, shout out to George Sideropoulos for recommending this company. Thanks for dropping a comment. I really appreciate it. I'll drop a list here on the companies that I have to put out a video on uh, in the future. So I appreciate you dropping a comment and if you guys gain value or learn something, like, subscribe, I really appreciate it. So let's get into it. So first things first, uh, if you guys have seen a bunch of my Investor Stay Basic segments, uh, you know I'll use Yahoo Finance for a lot of the things. And uh, I had some issues with Yahoo Finance. For some reason, they kept on saying uh, this company that I'm taking a look at, ticker symbol ELP, Compania Paranis de Energia, aka Copal, everyone calls it Copal. Uh, they were saying it was like a $35 billion company, whereas every other site was saying it was uh, $3.36 billion. So I had to go to Google Finance. That's why I got this funky chart here today. Just wanted to clear that up. So this company is a Brazilian utility company. It is being traded on the New York Stock Exchange for $1.23 per share. And it's a possible value play. Uh, and I'll get into that later in this video. So let's go find out what this Brazilian utility company does. So I got a blurb here about what the company does. Copal engages in the generation, transmission, distribution, and sale of electricity to uh, industrial, residential, commercial, rural customers in the state of Parana, Parana, Brazil. Let me know if I got that right. Um, and they also do some telecommunication stuff and some pipe gas uh, supplying as well. So I mentioned I learned quite a bit when making this video. Uh, I didn't even know there were 26 states in Brazil. Parana is the fifth biggest state. It's got a population of 11 and a half million people. And in that state, there's actually 399 municipalities, which is pretty crazy. A couple other fun facts to know is uh, the population of this state is growing at 1% every 10 years, so not too quickly. And uh, this is the first company uh, first Brazilian electric company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. So that's pretty cool. I got this supplementary slide uh, kind of showing what Copal does. They do generation, transmission, distribution, commercialization, telecom. Uh, I mean, these, these first four have to do with electricity and energy. If you want to learn how a utility company uh, makes money, please go check out my Fortis video. I explain it in depth there. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this video. But please check that video out. Now to one of the most important slides in this video. And that is the Brazilian real versus the US dollar. So one thing to note is that the real has dropped 40% over the last five years. Imagine having a currency uh, compared to US dollar and it drops 40%. Like that's insane. In comparison, uh, the Canadian dollar is actually up 3% uh, compared to the US dollar in this time period. So that's... That's pretty significant. I mean, this that's why uh, when you invest in foreign companies, uh, it's it, there, there is some inherent risks that you don't think about. Uh, the main one being currency. So I got this chart here that shows the sales over the past four years and it looks amazing. But you got to remember the last slide where I talked about the Br Brazilian real dropping in value uh, compared to US dollar by 40%. Um, and since this is traded on the New York Stock Exchange, a US exchange, uh, traded in US dollars. Uh, I converted it over to US dollars and the numbers don't look as amazing as they do in this graphic here. Key things to note is the revenue is actually down $400 million from 2019 to 2020, uh, but their net income is actually up over $300 million uh, from 2019 to 2020. So that's really good. Um, but why would their earnings go up so significantly in one year? Well, I'll explain a little bit on that in the next slide. I was listening to their Q4 conference call um, and they mentioned the PLD uh, for the spot price had an increase of about 30% and that really drove the earnings. Um, PLD is basically describes the spot price for electricity in Brazil. So imagine you're selling electricity and it's up 30% in a quarter just due to demand. Um, 
that will definitely have a huge impact on your bottom line and it certainly did. I also got this little chart here that shows uh, so where their sales are coming from. Um, and you can see a majority of it is coming from selling electricity to cons uh, customers within the state. Uh, they also sell their energy and electricity to distributors in different states so they can distribute it and they also uh, let other states use their transmission lines. And of course, construction revenue. I mean, if you watch my Fortis video, you know all about what I think about construction uh, revenue. So uh, they got that as well. So nothing out of the ordinary here thus far. I'm going to mention my Fortis uh, video here again. I talk about why I don't like utility companies because they must take on debt uh, to fund more projects to generate a return. And, uh, you know, Coppola is no different. They do have uh, quite a bit of debt debt <laughs> 1.9 billion us these are us dollar figures uh, they have about 620 million dollars in cash so i actually think their balance sheet is better than fortis um but one thing to know is brazilian interest rates or key key rates are actually the lowest it's been in 20 years uh, at about two percent so you know that's amazing for a company that needs to take out debt uh, to fund their projects with interest rates this low, uh, it's really good for the company. So if you're an investor, which you probably are since you're watching the video, you know free cash flow is king because a uh, company can pay dividends to shareholders, which you know we love. They can buy back shares, uh, so there's less outstanding shares out there, and they can use it for investing activities to fund new projects. So really good stuff. And this is pretty good news for Copal because as we can see here, they've been increasing their levered free cash flow and their free cash flow per share is also increasing. I wanted to throw both in here because this could look good and then if they actually uh, had more shares or release more shares to the public uh, over this time, this number would actually go down. So, you know, both of them have gone up significantly. So this is really good for investors. So I got a chart here that has price to free cash flow. As you can see, the price to free cash flow today is at 4.39. And before the pandemic even hit, it was at 6.7. So you're telling me we have more free cash flow uh, available as a company, uh, but our share price is actually lower and we're paying off debt. Uh, we, we have a decent balance sheet, you know, interest rates are low. Like these are all great things, uh, but the valuation is lower than pre-pandemic. I think that provides some pretty good upside for the company. The second uh, metric I'm going to look at is EV to EBITDA. EV enterprise value It's usually used as the value if someone was going to buy out your company, how much would they have to pay? Well, they would have to buy out all the shares, which would be the market cap. They'd have to pay for all the uh, debt and of course minus the cash. So that is the enterprise value. And EBITDA or EBITDA, some people say, uh, earnings before interest, uh, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, which is, in my opinion, just earnings before a bunch of other uh, items that really kind of skew the earnings, um, is at its lowest uh, that has been in quite a while. It's at 4.63. And if you look at what it was pre-pandemic, it was actually at 7.04. So that to me also tells me that there is some significant upside for Copal uh, based on those two metrics. Okay, so now let's jump into my final thoughts. So I have a couple items here. I mean, <laughs> price to earnings ratio of 4.97, that is incredibly low uh, for a company traded on New York Stock Exchange. Uh, dividend yield of 10%, I mean, that's incredibly juicy. Um, and JP Morgan uh, recently, on March 18th, gave it an outperform rating uh, at 8.2 real per share, which is actually equal to a dollar 42 USD per share. So they're saying, hey, there's 16% upside, plus you're getting the 10% dividends. I also wanted to throw in this. I have no idea why this company did a 10 for one split, stock split. And what that means is this company was actually trading for like about $12 per share. And uh, if you had one share, they gave you 10 shares of a dollar 20 or whatever the valuation is today. I believe it's $1.22. Um, I have no idea. I mean, it might entice investors because they would be like, oh wow, the stock is so looks so cheap. I'm gonna buy it because a lot of uh, investors just don't even look at market cap. They just look at share price. Um, but I have no idea why they did that. And then my final thoughts is, you already know from my Fortis video, I don't like utility companies. There's just too much going on. It's complicated. There's so many projects. There's so many regulators. Uh, there's so many laws driven by different provinces. Um, 
and I won't invest in a utility company in Canada, what makes you think that I'm going to invest in one in Brazil where it gets even more complicated when you throw in the Brazilian real, uh, political tension, stuff like that. So personally for me, although it looks undervalued, uh, I just can't invest in it because I just don't understand too much about what happens in Brazil. And I think the utility industry is very complicated and out of my uh, circle of competence. So I won't be investing in Copal. George, buddy, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was helpful. Uh, and for anyone else who is interested in Copal or ticker symbol ELP, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I learned quite a bit about Brazil. So I enjoyed learning about it and making this video. Uh, if you got some value, I hope you subscribe, drop a like for the YouTube algorithm, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Bye.